Statistics show that two out of the last ten dental professionals you've spoken with have seriously considered suicide. And within the next four years, one will actually go through with it. Now what if I were to tell you that there's seven gardening principles that I use that can dramatically change that statistic in dentistry forever. And you'll be able to recall all of them by the time I'm done speaking. You see, I grew up in a house and we had a greenhouse in the backyard. And we had to go out there and tend to it because that's how we were eating. And every time I went out, I would look at it and I'd be a little scared because there was a crack in the foundation. And it was quite sketchy, though nothing happened. So I'd go in there with my pop and he'd look around and survey every single plant. He knew exactly what needed to be done. I'd run over there, turn on my hose, and I'd never forget because it was a little loose and a little sprinkle would come out and my hand would be all cold in the morning. I'd give him the hose and he would get in there like surgery and water each plant exactly the way it needed to be. He, he was good. My father truly did have four green thumbs. What I mean by that is he was always barefoot, so you know, use your imagination for that. But every now and then, we'd find a plant that was a little bit too far gone, one we weren't going to be able to bring back. And he'd look at it, and he'd look outside, and the water would be dripping onto the ground where a weed was growing, and he'd say, that water should have been in this plant could have grown, giving us another meal so we can live longer. You go outside and rip the weed out, you'd be like a water in the wrong seed, son. He also taught me about adjusting the water intake and all these other different things. But the key about the greenhouse was that it felt like a safe place to me. I could always win in there. I knew the rules. Nourish the plants correctly and they'll grow. Now, we couldn't grow certain things because of the temperature outside and the amount of sunlight, but the rules still stayed the same, and it was easy for me to thrive in this atmosphere. Now, if you can recall that short story I just told you, you already got the seven principles down to changing your life and the lives of everyone around you. Now, I'm going to put the puzzle pieces together, but before I do that, I want to first explain the law of attraction for those who have never heard of this. When you have a thought, it travels down your spine and releases from your lower back. That thought then travels across the entire universe, not just America and not just Earth. Third law of motion demands that every action has an opposite and equal reaction, which means the universe has to do whatever it has to to you to make that thought travel back to you, opposite, and be thought again, which is the equal reaction. So in other words, what you've been focusing on and what you've been feeling, the universe is going to make you focus on and feel again, so be careful what seeds you water. And I love that analogy. Think of every thought, 60,000 thoughts on average per day per person, every thought like a drop of water going into different flower pots. Things I like about my job, things I don't like about my job. My house, my spouse, my kids, that post on Facebook. The majority wins. The plans to get the most nourishment grow. Hold on to that analogy. As far as the law of attraction, applying these principles to my life, it retired me when I was the age of 28, just eight months after learning about them. Right after that, I felt invincible. I went for custody of my kids, got it, got a Super Bowl ring, my pilot's license, I moved to Florida, and the list goes on. But those are, that's just stuff I wanted. This works for anything, and that's the best part. So let's tie in these gardening principles with law of attraction principles by going through the story. First things first, my parents didn't have to nudge me to go out and do it. I knew that it was our food. I had to go out and do this every day, and that was the mental discipline. That's the key, mental discipline and the law of attraction. You get out of things what you put into it. You can't go into the gym and do 10 curls on your right arm and walk out and expect to be healthy. It's not how it works. You can't do an affirmation 10 times and expect to be rich by Tuesday. That's just not how it works. You're going to have to set alarms, you have to do your mental exercises, you're going to have to commit yourself. Next part of the story, I'm staring at this shaky building with a cracked foundation. That's it. Every thought has a foundation, like a building. And you can paint the walls, pretty colors, you can put pictures up, but if the foundation is cracked, the building is cracked. And if your thought foundation is, I'm broke until next Thursday, every thought you have has that foundation, so work on your thought foundations. The next step, I'm committing. I gotta go in there, because I wanna eat. I acknowledge the rules of the game, and accept them, and commit. 
thing about the law of attraction is I might not like trying to feel great in a piss poor day, but my tomorrow depends on it. These are things that we're going to have to accept and live by and remember throughout the day. What happens next? My father's in there surveying the scene. What plants need watering? Mental check-ins. Throughout the day, you need to wake up and ask yourself, what has my vibe been today? Do I need to change it? Mental check-ins. Critical. Key. What's next? I go outside and get the hose so we can water some seeds. We already talked about watering seeds. Thoughts become things. Stay focused. Next, my dad looks, he sees the dead plant, he rips the reed out of the ground, he says, we've been watering the wrong seed, son, and now this ugly weed is here. Cause and effect. You see, I need you to fear your negative thoughts because of the weeds that will grow in your life. Promises like New Year's resolutions and personal commitments come and go, especially when you put time frame on them. But fear? Fear will make you do your mental exercise. Fear heartburn because you know what it'll do. You'll change your eating habits. Fear that dark alley because of what's been happening down there, you'll stop walking down that dark alley. And that's how I like to implement the law of attraction into people's lives. Use fear. Fear your negative thoughts. Wake up to them, stop them, and change them. The next part of the story, my dad teaches me how to keep the plant alive. Changing and nourishing, nourishment patterns, water, sunlight. If you're not getting the results you want, you might have to change what you're doing or thinking. Law of attraction. Brain is a muscle. Has muscle memory. It's going to throw at you what it's used to throwing at you. Change what it's used to throwing at you. Waking up, catching and stopping a negative scenario, mid-scenario, because you know the repercussions if you let it play out. That's the formula. Autopilot shifting through repetition. Complement that by running a best case scenario and you end up retired on the beach somewhere and giving speeches in your off time, if that's what you're into. Now, remember, we couldn't grow certain things because of the garden's limitations as far as temperature and sunlight because of where we lived. That represents life's obstacles. Unfortunately, there are several obstacles with the law of attraction that are gonna stand in your way all the time. The ego is one of them. I'm not talking about conceited or arrogance. I'm talking about that voice that says you can't, you won't. How dare you dream big? We got some ways to get through that. The other obstacle I want to talk about is basically like this. Controlling one's thoughts is the hardest occupation a man can have according to both science and religion. But it yields the greatest reward, the ability to create your future. Some people want McDonald's, some people want Burger King. Everyone wants the ability to create their future. Now, I believe this could change the dental world tremendously for good. And it would be my honor to bring the full presentation in all its glory with all its mental exercises and practices to stages and offices near you. Now, speaking of offices, imagine an office where everyone on here is on this page. Sounds like a thriving office to me. Now, picture an office where they're not. Let's make change. See better, be better. Thank you.